Welcome to The Garden Show, a show created to demonstrate just how simple and rewarding gardening can be. From growing your own succulent fresh veg to having blooming flowers, we're going to show you how you can do all of it. And today is the day we start. So here we are, it's springtime in the garden and I've been out seeing what jobs I can get done this weekend. And there's a few things I've noticed, there's a few gaps appearing in the garden. I know I've meant to deal with them over the last couple of years, but I've neglected doing them. This year I'm going to deal with them. I'm going to bring a bit, little bit more colour and energy to the garden. Something else I've noticed about the garden this year is the lawn just doesn't look great. While I was cleaning away the winter debris, I noticed a lot of weed growth, but I also noticed there's a lot of patches in the garden and I really want to get them dealt with this year. It's so easy to look after a lawn. It's very simple, with a few easy things. I know I can get this lawn looking absolutely fantastic. Something else I'm gonna do is start growing veg. Now, as a person who loves plants, I always advise people, take it slow with growing veg. Don't try and do everything in one year. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take my own advice, and I'm gonna take a couple of things. And a couple of things I'm gonna try growing this year are spuds and rhubarb. And I think the best place for me to start is in the local garden center. Buying plants for your garden is not rocket science. If you're going out to your garden centre today to buy plants, you only need to know three things. One, what do you want that plant to do? Do you want it to have scent, colour, or even provide a function in the garden? Two, how much space do you have? And don't worry about overly measuring it. You can pace it out with your feet or even get your camera or your phone and take a photograph and show the member of staff in the garden centre and they'll help you. Number three, how much money do you have to spend? Plants come in all shapes and sizes and there's ones available for every budget. So before you head out to the garden centre today, keep those three things in mind. So here we are at the garden centre. If you want to start learning about plants, garden centres are a great place to start. The staff are always passionate and knowledgeable, so don't be afraid to ask when you get here. Mark, how are you doing? Oh, hey Barry, how's things? How are we you? We were out in the garden this morning and I need your help. We have a bit of a space, we have a gap, and I really want to fill it. Uh, there's, a, there's, a, there's a mature plant there, the borders, it, it gets a little bit of sun. We've got a metre and a half uh, a space. Uh, I don't want anything too fussy though. I don't yeah. want to do too much work, I just want something that I can put in today and it's going to give me colour for the rest of the year. What do you recommend? Well, you're just at the right point when you came to there, Barry. I'm just here now beside the Rissian Bowles Mall here. Okay. Ideal plant as a backing plant, they'll give you a bit of height for the back okay. area you're looking for. Not going to be too big, about two, two and a half feet height by width. Okay. Again, give you loads of colour. Am I going to have to do too much work today? No, not too much work Brilliant. at all to it. Gives you loads of colour throughout the year. Fantastic. You keep going each year and it's, your maintenance is very low as well at the end of the year. So Brilliant. It's, it's going to be fairly easy for you to okay, cope Okay, that's one down. And that's one. And if you want to come a little bit lower then we could use the likes of the hooker here, Barry. Okay. Again, Lovely, lower yeah. in height so it's going to step down from yeah. the Arisium. Fantastic. Again, it gives you a lovely foliage colour throughout the year. Yeah. And you've also in the summer then got these long spikes which will give you a lovely flower. Again, am I going to have to do too much work no, to this? Very little maintenance in this again, Barry. Very just little. You're very little at the end of the day. Brilliant, this is fantastic. And there's one more here, Barry, as well, which might suit just as I said for the ground cover oh, plant yeah, at the front. Man. The viola propria here. It's a fantastic. lovely little foliage plant. And then you've got your lovely little purple flowers as well on the Low front maintenance. Front. Low maintenance again and low in height. So just as a ground cover plant. Absolutely fantastic. Okay, Thanks Barry. A million, no. Man. thinking about growing veg this year, I want to start slow and easy, thinking about two crops maybe, spuds and rhubarb. What do you recommend? Well, if you're going to go with spuds, probably one of the best ways to start will be with a first early. Okay. Plantable in March, and again, from then you're going to be harvesting from May to June, and you can work on from that then into likes of your second earlies or into your main crops. Easy to grow? Easy to grow, easy to start with, no problems at all. And the rhubarb? And the rhubarb, I have rhubarb here as well, again, you can start planting now with a vegetable compost just to help it along the way. Okay. Then keep an eye on your watering and your feeding. Are you Besides guaranteed that, these are going to grow? No problem at all. Just keep really an eye. easy? Yeah. Once you have your veg and your watering, there's no problem. Absolutely fantastic. You have me sold again, Mark. Thanks. If you need to know more about rhubarb and growing spuds, log on to garden.ie. Hey Mark, one last thing hey, today, I again? promise you. Looking at the lawn this morning, gave it a little bit of a sweep over to get rid of the winter debris. 
noticed a little bit of weed, a little bit of moss, and it's a little bit patchy in places. What do you recommend to give the lawn a lift? Well, at the minute, Barry, what we suggested is that you get a lawn feed weed and moss killer. Okay. Again, at this stage, it'll help to enhance your lawn, kill the weeds and the moss. Okay. Give you a few days from that then, and you'll be able to rake out your moss and take away your weeds. And then you better go on to just putting in some regrass seed. This is patches. easy, That'd is it? Yeah, this is easy. All you need to do is apply this day and leave it. Okay. Once the rain soaks in, it'll do the work it needs to do. After that, then in a week or so, once you're ready for your patches, you can then put in your grass seed and reseed again. Okay, Mark, you have me sold again. Thanks a million. You no, are I'm a right. star. Okay, let's go. Okay, now, time to get these plants in the ground. Planting plants is not difficult. There's only a couple of things you really, really need to know. The first thing you want to do is site the plants so you're happy with where they're going to go. The second thing to do is give them a little bit of water before you put them into the ground. Thirdly, actually digging the hole. All you need to know about digging a hole for a plant is you want the surface height of the, of the pot the same height as the ground, the ground that they're growing into. In terms of how wide you dig, one to two times the width of the pot. And that's really all you need to know. So let's get these in the ground. It's give your plants a little bit of a boost. Think about adding a little bit of multi-purpose compost. I'm using one of Westland's products here, which is a multi-purpose one, which really is good quality, and it'll give your plants a great boost. additional thing to think about when you're putting plants into the ground is facing your plant. It's a very simple thing. All you're really talking about doing is putting the plant's best face forward. So in terms of this, I want this, I want the best orientation for this. So I'm going to turn it like this. So the higher plant, the higher part of the plant is at the back and the most amount of flowers are facing. This one here, again, just turn like this so the highest flower stem is at the back. Again, this is a ground cover so it's not as important. And really, that's all you need to know. There we go, job done. We've got a whole summer ahead to enjoy the plants we bought today. Okay, so we're gonna plant these spuds, but we're not gonna plant them directly into the ground. Really with spuds, what you want to do is chit them first. All chitting is, is giving the spuds a head start. What's involved with chitting is, firstly, getting yourself a tray. You can use a seed tray like I am, or even use an old egg carton. And to chit, all you simply do is take the spuds out and look for the small buds that are emerging on. And that's what we call the top side of the spud. And all you do is place them top side up into your tray and leave them in a cool, dry place with lots of light for four to five weeks. And we'll be coming back to these buds in four to five weeks time to show you just how you can plant them out into the garden. Okay, so that's the spuds. Let's get the rhubarb into the ground. Okay, so we're ready to plant the rhubarb, and you know what? I am delighted I got to the garden centre today and bought it, because I haven't eaten rhubarb crumble since I was five years old. And you know what? I almost feel like eating it right now, but I'm going to give it a head start and get it into the ground. The important things to remember when planting rhubarb are, you need plenty of space, you need a lot of sunlight, and when you're putting it into the ground, dig the hole a little bit wider. They like organic matter. Also, place, this, place it a little bit higher in the ground and mound the soil up up around it. That'll help promote growth. So let's get this one into the ground. And there you have it. I don't know how I'm going to stop myself from eating it over the next few weeks, but I know in a couple of weeks' time, I'm going to be eating rhubarb crumbs. I'm just finishing off, taking away the last of the winter debris. The first thing I'm going to do now is apply the long weed and feed that we got in the garden centre. I've just read the instructions. It really is as simple as Mark said. It's pop open the lid and simply sprinkle over the area as such. Okay, so in terms of sowing seed, 
As Mark explained, we don't apply lawn seed directly after a lawn weed and feed. You have to wait two to three weeks until the lawn weeds have been killed off, give it a light rake away to remove dead debris, and then you can apply your seed. And it really is as simple and straightforward as opening up the packet and broadcasting it across the, the patchy areas. And you should expect to see germination within one to two weeks. Thanks for joining us. Tune in next week and we're going to be showing you just how you can grow your own garden from seed. And we're going to be joined by an expert from Westland Horticulture who's going to show us how to deal with troublesome soils.